this video, I'm going to show you test footage that I shot with the Crane 2S 3-axis gimbal. Quick ethics statement, I received a free unit of the Crane 2S in exchange for an unbiased test. The camera I used was the Sony a7 III, recording 4K 24p. There is no slow motion because that's cheating, and no post stabilization either. This is a performance test, so I'm not really going to go through all the specs of the gimbal. You can easily get the specs from Jiyun's website or any of the resellers. The first lens I put on the gimbal was a Siri 35mm anamorphic lens. To monitor what I was shooting, I hooked up the Jiyun Transmount wireless HDMI transmitter, and I received the image on my iPhone 11 hooked up to my wrist with a sport band. This combination was pretty heavy, so I mostly just stuck to the basic shots that you'd need for narrative style shooting. And here we have a slow walking shot with steady shot off. Next, I tried a two shot, and I think this one came out pretty smooth. I really like the look of the lens in this shot. Next, I went into inverted mode to get a low angle of her feet as she walked. Here I noticed that the horizon tilted a little bit, even though I had calibrated the gimbal right before shooting. And for each lens that I show you here, I'm gonna do walking and running tests. So here's a walking test with the Siri 35 millimeter, steady shot is still off. Now running. Running with the optional dual handle attachment. And running with the single handle and steady shot on. Next, I mounted up the Sony 85mm f1.8 lens, which is pretty lightweight, but it's a longer focal length, which amplifies the shake as you walk with the gimbal. And it's much harder to keep framing with this lens, so it's a good test of the accuracy of the gimbal's follow modes. Here's POV mode, which is pan, tilt, and roll follow. It was really difficult to keep the statues properly framed at 85mm in POV mode. Now for the walking and running tests. First, walking with steady shot off. And then running. Running with the 85 was a lot easier than with the Siri 35 because it's a lighter weight lens. Now with steady shot on. Okay, the last lens I tested was the Sony 24 to 105 millimeter F4 lens, and I set it at 50 millimeters. Here you can see the Crane 2S doing its auto tune to adjust its settings to the weight of the lens. Walking with steady shot off at 50 millimeters. And running. And now with steady shot on. Then I try to rise up from low to high. 
This definitely started putting stress on my body because it got pretty heavy. Steady shot on. Then I zoomed out to 24 millimeters on the lens and switched into go mode, which follows your pan and tilt movements at maximum speed. Next I switched to pan follow mode and I improvised some movement. I wanted to see how well I could keep up with him when I didn't know exactly what he was going to do next. Then I turned steady shot on. I was actually the most satisfied with the gimbal's performance in this more extreme type of situation. So here's my final thoughts on the Crane 2S. First of all, I have to say this gimbal is not my favorite just because it's so heavy and because the handle is so thick. It's a little bit hard for me to hold and it very quickly tires out my whole body. If I don't have the heaviest lens on the gimbal and I'm holding it close to my body like you see here, then it's not so bad. I'm able to carry it for a pretty long period of time before I start feeling fatigued. I can even run with it for short distances and it doesn't feel too bad. But when I put a heavier lens on the gimbal and a bunch of accessories, and I try a more difficult position like shooting inverted, that's where the weight really starts to take its toll. I felt fatigued after just a few minutes of shooting like this. So in terms of the overall performance of the gimbal, I think it's about on par with other gimbals in its class. And it does a pretty good job with high action running shots, especially if you're moving in a straight line. However, I did notice horizon roll, which I had hoped a powerful gimbal like this would be able to overcome. And generally speaking, I just had a hard time doing smooth pans, no matter what smoothness or speed setting I used. I wish these gimbals allowed more fine-tuned control of the expo curve of the gimbal's response. And overall, with my lightweight a7 III camera, I just don't feel like I was getting dramatically better performance than I was already getting with the much lighter weight Weeble S. Here you're seeing some shots from my Gimbal Masterclass, which is a training course I made entirely with the Weeble S. And the great thing about this little gimbal is that because it's so lightweight, I have the freedom to do types of shots that I couldn't do with a heavier gimbal, like mounting it on the end of a monopod and rising it way up. So maybe the Crane 2S really starts to shine when you're using a much heavier setup than I use, but since I don't have a heavier camera, I wasn't able to test a heavier configuration. Okay, so that's my test footage of the Jiyun Crane 2S. Thanks so much for watching, but stay tuned because here's a preview of my Gimbal Masterclass with the Weeble S. I'm like...